Hello and welcome. Today, I'm going to be discussing Civilization tier list, not for 1v1, but for team games. There's been a lot of requests for tier lists for civs for 2v2, 3v3, and 4v4. What I've gone ahead and done is I've created this synergy tier list. This is not about strength of a sieve, but how they synergize with other sieves, including themselves. So, for example, if we have an Aztec player who queues with another Aztec player, they won't necessarily have the best synergy. Or the British and the British. They, although being a strong civilization, do not synergize well with each other since they both require large amounts of food and will tear through hunts very quickly, and maybe even cannibalize each other's hunts. Although they can create a full composition of units, and that composition is strong, they do have similar dependencies. So a few requirements. Red means that they have poor synergy, yellow means decent synergy, and then green means they can synergize well. As you can see, there are some sieves on this chart that synergize well with every sieve in the game. And that is because they can, they're versatile, they can do any strategy, and they can fill roster gaps. So, the types of roster compositions that I'm considering are Muskhus, Skirm Goon, and whether they have strong artillery. Pike Bow is part of it, but in team games, Age 2 is not typically as favorable per se uh you might see some more age two timing attacks but really t games go later civilizations play in the later game more frequently and they just tend to run longer and you don't see as many pikes because you're not contributing to counter a specific all-encompassing army you're just contributing units to a larger ball of units and pikes really just get in the way, they die, and they aren't as effective as dragoons. So, like I mentioned, whether they can pivot, if they can fill a unit composition, or if their unit resource synergy is good. So this is kind of the general chart that I've created, but now let's get into the civilizations. So, I'm going to start off with, I think, probably the best civ in team games. If you have this person on your team, you will be able to fill any deficits for your rosters, and that's France. France has tons of cards for infantry, cavalry, and artillery. They have a good economy. They are strong throughout the game, including the late game, and can fill in any of your needs. If you want to rush, they can rush. If you want to boom, they can boom. If you need to turtle, they can also turtle. I mean, they have forts and... Uh, other cards that help with that. They have every unit composition and are a very complete civilization. The next Civ that I think very similarly would belong in the S tier would be India. India is one of the best Civs in the game right now, so I'll probably put them at the top in terms of strength. They can do anything. Um, I mean, from age two, they have goons, they have cav, they have skirms, they have musk. If you need something from them, they can do it, and they'll do it well. So India is definitely in the S tier. If you have an Indian teammate, they will be able to help you out. Not only that, they're siege elephants, they have powerful game-changing shipments that can change tides of battles in the third age and the fourth age. I think another Civ that I'm going to put into the S tier is probably the Ottomans. Now, they their Dragoons are not necessarily that good. You don't want your Ottoman teammate to make Cav Archers. But I believe that the baseline infantry for the civilization is so good and versatile that... Especially the Abyss Gun. I mean... When you're in tight spaces and there's hundreds of units on the field, the Abyss Gun won't take up much space. It can hide behind heavy line infantry or cavalry, and they can just decimate units. The Great Bombard is fantastic in the late game. It really just can change the tide of war. 
Um, and they're just strong. I mean, they're they're definitely one of the best civs in the game right now. Um, the only reason I'm putting them below France is because of the Dragoons. And they don't really have the best goons. Now, um, a civ I, now the thing is, is that in team games, right, I don't really think there's a... Oh, this is messed up. I don't really think there's any bad civs. You can do any civilization, and like I said, your deficits, unless you're mirroring your teammate, you will probably be able to cover most gaps. Um, moving on, I think an interesting pick, China. Now, China is, again, probably in a 1v1 tier list, bottom of S tier, top of A tier. Fantastic civilization, lots of versatility, but the thing is, is that their banner armies kind of force them into awkward team compositions, and they can't really maximize the value of, say, monocomping a unit. For example, in 3v3, also known as monocomp game, where you just have one teammate build cav, one teammate build skirms, and one teammate build musks or something like that, right? China can't do that. And that kind of puts them in this awkward position. Furthermore, they desperately need a teammate with dragoons. If they don't have a teammate with good goons, then they are really in a difficult situation um in 1v1 they can get away with not having as many good goons they have the Bayang army they have manchurian cavalry archer shipments and they can kind of hold off with those powerful shipments but in team games it's not one battle or one a couple of big battles that decide the game it's many and so they're just kind of contributing like mid skirmishers and like Heavy Cav is good, but I mean, other civs do Heavy Cav better. So it's kind of hard for them to pick what they would go for. I think I'm going to place them in the B tier. I know that might be a bit of a contentious take, just given how powerful they are. But again, I just don't think they synergize particularly well, and that's why I'm punishing them a bit. A civ that I think is, ironically, one of the better civs in team games... That is not that great in 1v1. Russia. Russia's economy, they need time. And if you give them time, they blow up. I mean, you don't even need three TCs, and they can get to 100 villagers faster than most civilizations in the game. They have Cossacks, Strelitz, which just fill the battlefield, cheap units for trades, Operniks, which are honestly game-ending when you are in the 4th and 5th ages. The Operniks, just sending a couple of them into the back line while they tank on the front line with Cossacks and Strelitz. I'm going to put these guys in the A tier. They suffer a similar problem with China where they need good goons or good anti-cav, but if you have a civilization that has good musketeers or goons, then they can really just kind of fill in the rest of your unit roster with Strelitz. And, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're strong, they're good in team games, and they do have some game-changing units like the opera next. a civilization that i think is a bit i mean typically when you see this civ you either just see skirms or reuters and that's the dutch they need a i mean they can go cav for sure they can go bus uh hus um but a lot of times you'll just see Dutch players going Reuter cannon. And I mean, that's great. They, they'll they have a ton of Reuters given their 150 military unit population space. And they can cover all of your raiding needs. They'll cover all of your, you know, uh, anti-cav purposes fine. They kind of, I mean, they're good. They're, just, they're good. I'll probably put them above China. Um, and their skirms are great. So... They, they do fill a major role in the unit roster, and they can turtle, they can sit in base, and just do just fine. Another Civ that I think actually is good in team games, but not good in 1v1, is USA. USA has 
good musketeers. They have an extra range. They are just strong musketeers throughout the game. They have multiple trickles. And with the addition of the repeater carbine cavalry, they can even fill in some of your goon needs. Their cav isn't necessarily that strong compared to, you know, like the likes of Lakota or France or Germany, Britain, etc. But I mean, their infantry is good. And on top of that, in like a 4v4 game, you can just have your United States player train like 10 culverins and like 15 Gatling guns. And they'll do, they'll, they'll serve your need. And all they have to micro for is wood gold. And if they, their micro with culverins is decent, they'll be able to assist very, very well. Um, although at the higher levels of play, if I mean, wh when it comes down to the late game, culverins are on the field and they probably will struggle in that regard. But if they have decent micro, have a lot of culverins, they'll do well. All right. Let's go with the civilization that I don't really think synergizes well with many other civs, and that would be Inca. I, I think in 1v1, Inca is solid top of B, bottom of A. They're really good on the water. They can just take the water for your team and make sure the enemy doesn't have any presence on the water. However, they they have this problem where... Their skirmishers are okay. They're, you don't really train plumed spearmen. I mean, their chimus are great. So if they go chimu, your cav is pretty much filled. Um, the the goon situation, though, and the anti-raiding. So if you're, you're in base and you're getting raided, they can't really assist you because their, their shock infantry isn't quick enough to keep up with enemy cav. Um, I mean... <sighs> I think I'll put them in the B tier, because they can honestly just monocomp Chimu runners, and you'll be good throughout the game. They have a lot of defensive abilities. They can take map control with their war huts and forts, and they can just make the game hell for the other, other team in terms of raids with Chimu runners. Now, the British. I think that's an easy A tier. You're not going to see them go longbows too much, but they can go Mas Haas. They can go Falconats. Um, they have great Dragoons as well. Their cavalry is really fantastic. Um, I mean, if they want to go Longbows, go for it. If, if your team desperately needs Skirmishers, they can do that. They can go into Rangers, which I don't really recommend. But, I mean, they can just do it all. Um, they don't do everything well, though, in terms of the Skirmishers. But their Hus, Musk, and Falconat combo is just great. I mean, they'll be your frontline tanks. They'll take up all of the damage while your backline units get it done. Spain. I'm going to put Spain above the Brits in this one here. Because uh, similar to France, they have a complete unit roster. Um, the Lancers are really powerful. They have Goons, Musk, Soldado play. But I think the Soldado play is a bit underwhelming in team games because it takes a long time to get reinforcements and if your team gets swept and you lose a decisive battle you're not going to be able to get as many soldados out however their musk skirm you know they can they can do a lot um yeah they're just a great civilization they have good fast fortress timings for your team to do a timing push and again they can just fill your needs in any 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 roster position they can do it now, Germany. Germany is great. I think I'll put them here. The thing with Germany is they don't obviously have a musketeer. Their goons are slow, um, but they are tanky. You know, the war wagons can really fill in just on the front line and just absolutely decimate. Um, they don't really have many powerful artillery shipments that can change the tide. The mercenaries are good in a 1v1 setting, but they kind of are... The impact isn't as much because there's more units on the field that they're going to have to deal with, if that makes sense. So it's... The Ulans are great for raiding, you know, beginning the game, end game. They, they can just send in Ulans. They can go Cav, and they'll just do it really well. And they'll be able to put pressure on the opponent 
take people off of natural resources, claim map control for your team with the raiding, and they have good skirms too. I mean, they're not the best, they're, they're just pretty decent. Um, so yeah, I think Germany would probably go somewhere along the A tier. We'll see when the list is complete. Japan. The Japanese. I'm going to put them here. Japan in 1v1 is really kind of underwhelming at this point. They have really slow tempo. They need a lot of time, and they need a lot of map control. In team games, they are given that time. They can do a full shrine boom and become very oppressive. They have a very complete unit roster, although you're not going to see many people going Yabusame, but, I mean, how many team games have we all played where you see Japan and you're like, all right, they're just going to go Ashis? And you just, that's fine. Like, that, that's that's so fine. Um, you feel the power of the Ashis in Age 4 when they get all of their upgrades in from the Golden Pavilion, their cards in, and their economy is at full boom. And they just, once they reach that point, it's really tough to deal with the Daimyo and Shogunate coming into the back of somebody's base and just dropping off frontline reinforcements and artillery. Really strong, really good. Yumi's also exceptional units. They can go Nagis. Really not much they can't do. And honestly, in the early Third Age, too, when a lot of the two Falconet shipments are coming out, the Yabusame do a really good job of shutting that down and serve the anti-cav purpose. But really just Ashis, man. Just really, really oppressive. An interesting one here. Hauza. Now, with Hauza, they they have Javelin Riders, they've got Raiders, they've got Lafiti Knights. Like, their Cav is great. Fellaini Archers are good, Akana and Cobia are good. But on some team maps, what they really need is they need to get control of trading posts. And there are some maps in the team game pool that do not have trading posts. And that is a massive problem for them. Um... They do really fill in a complete roster, and they're quite strong. So I'm going to put them there. Um, you know, honestly, they're probably better than the Dutch in team games. Um, they can, they, I mean, just because they can complete holes in a Civs roster. Like, say you're playing with Germany, and they're like, we need musks. You just go Akana and Cobia. Um, I mean, they can, they can really do anything. And um, I just think with the map pool and some of the trading posts, because your teammates will need trading posts too, but in, in like a 1v1 setting, Hauser needs like all of them for their influence. So it kind of sucks like when you have a Hauser teammate and they're like, I need all of these trading posts. You get like one maybe. And it just doesn't work really. It just it doesn't feel good. Um, but again, they're decent. How to Nishone. All right. I mean, I'll probably put them like here. Howd is very strong. They're skirmishers. The Aina and the Wakinas, or not Wakinas, the Forest Prowlers are just great. Um, in a 3v3, 4v4, you see How to Nishone on your team, you just tell them, make Forest Prowlers, GG, and that's it. Um, they do suffer from not having cannons until the fourth age, but then again, they will get there. It's just a matter of time, you know. A lot of a lot of teams will just generally get to the late game more often than in a one v one situation, so that's not really a problem. And they have a really good skirm goon comp, and they can just use that to great effect. Um, and again, the Forest Prowler is just so strong. That alone puts them in the A tier, regardless of anything else. Lakota. Lakota, I think, is also in the A tier. They are, like, in team games, the raiding aspect is so underrated because it just buys your team time to do what they need. Even in a 2v2 setting, you send four axes into the enemy base at like 4.30, 5 minutes. And it, it just causes problems for the enemy team. They have to respond. They don't know if you're pushing. They don't know if you're going for a rush. 
and you have bow riders in age two, which are fantastic. And it's in a one v one. If you go bow riders in age two, it's pretty all in, sending seven hundred coin to get your batch of bow riders out. But in team games, you have time to recover from that, and that really just I mean, throughout the entire game, you have just arguably like the best goons in the game and some of the best heavy cav. You will fulfill your cavalry role for your team, and Lakota does well. They do need skirmishers, um, and like they kind of their infantry is lacking. But I mean, every civ on this list pretty much has infantry that is better in some regard to Lakota on mass that they can cover for them. And I think that is the big thing. Like, and a lot of civs cavalry is like not their strong point. So as long as they have somebody to fill in the Musk skirm role, you know, Lakota is a great teammate to have. Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia, they, similar to Hausa, they, they would really like control of trading posts, um, which kind of hurts in some maps. But um, I think Ethiopia is really strong because their Neftenya and the Skirm battles in particular is so good. It has a lot of hit points. The Shottles are really good in team games because they can just get through a bunch of units. And when you have a large battle, the pathing for the Shottle is really nice. They have Javelin Riders, which are exceptional goon units. And yeah, I mean, they're just really good. I think they're better than Lakota, probably Howd as well, because they, I mean, they they have standard access to Musk, Skirm, Goon, Heavy Cav, essentially. For the Hausa, they need to send a card for the Akan, so they don't technically have access to that right away, but, and you don't always know what you're getting into in a team game, whether your teammates will need Musk, so it's kind of awkward sometimes if you pick your deck early. But, you know, Ethiopia has all of that. Their mountain monasteries provide a huge line of sight. They control, they gain map control for your team. Their water presence is decent. And, you know, just good civilization. I think they'd probably go above... Yeah, they would go above USA and Germany. Um, yeah, and, and Russia, I would say. Malta. Okay, Malta. Very high on the A tier. They can do everything. They can get Sentinels, which have been buffed recently, and they have great stats. They can go Mass Expo. They don't need to do Pikes because, you know, they also have access to Goons. Um, they're, they have the best Culverins in the game, which is not to be underestimated when there's tons of artillery on the field. They The longer the game goes, which happens in team games, the more they benefit. Um their economy in team games is insane because they have time to send German tongue in the second age or in transition and they can get 130 villagers with a factory and a Wignacore construction. They'll litter the map with depots, outposts, and forts just securing map control and they can just absolutely dominate. Absolutely dominate in team games in the late game. And they can rush. Honestly, I think they'd probably go up here. Um, actually, no, probably beneath Brits, because the Cav is underwhelming. There's no, um, there's really no cavalry combat cards. The order units are okay. I will say, though, order Opernex. I've played a couple of games with my friends, or a randoms. Order Opernex are great in a stalemate. They can just go in. Boom, teleport to a commandery across the map behind their base and just blow up some key infrastructure. Great teammate to have, uh, honestly. Mexico. Oh, you know, Soldados, Chinancos, Saltiadors, uh, rushing, FI, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. Um... I'm going to put them in the S tier. They are very good in team games. And they complete every roster. They have good units of every type. Um, probably top of A tier just because of 
the goon situation. But I mean, other than that, like the Soldado is a great anti-cav unit, and so are Chinakos. Um, you know, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do it like this. I think, but just to even this out a bit. Um, I honestly really don't like having Inca teammates. I'm like, what do you bring to the table? You know, like they bring okay bows and just chimus. Like, I'd honestly just rather have Hus. Or any calf, to be honest. Aztecs. I think um, Aztecs go, like, here. They're really strong. I mean, in a 1v1 setting, they're definitely an A-tier civilization. Um, Eagle Runner Knights, they can just monocomp that shit, and you'll be good. You'll be good to go. Um, the thing is with the Eagle Runner Knight, if they are your main goon unit for your team... They won't be able to stop raids as effectively because they only they're they're slower than regular dragoons and they won't be able to catch up. Um, but they're so versatile and the arrow knights are honestly just so freaking good. Like your team doesn't even need culverins; you just have arrow knights and your sieging ability when they're sitting behind a massive wall of your units, they'll be able to just destroy infrastructure uncontested and enemy culverins and artillery with relatively no problems. And that is really, really powerful. Like, nah, yeah, now that I think about it, just given that and that alone, like, they can just even go full Arrow Knights and be like an anti-skirm kind of unit, if that makes sense. When they get fully carded, you know, and all that stuff. Um, the Warrior Priest attack dance, like, they bring a lot to the table, and it's not to be underestimated. Coyote raids are good as well. Um, you know, early game, they can just shit out a bunch of units for your team and they become really good it's, it's kind of scary when you just run into full eagle runner knight arrow knight like it's really hard to stop that italy 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 i'll say this their their main strength is turtling and the architects don't really go out into the middle of the map so they don't really secure you map control and when it's a boom versus boom, right? Because that's usually what team games kind of turn into. Italy, they lose some of their specialty because in a 1v1, you have to like either pressure them or, you know, boom. But in a team game, if everybody's booming, then their effect isn't as great. Um, they're... Their units are also just kind of meh. The Bersaglieri are really good, obviously. Um, but I think the biggest thing is is like a lot of their power, especially like if you look at their decks, right? Their their unit shipments and age like their mercenary shipments and all that stuff, and you know, the papal units from the Basilica and the Lombards, they lose a lot of value in team games because I mean, like, in a 1v1, you see, like, three Papal Lancers, and that's, like, kind of scary, but, like, in a team game, whatever, you know, just not that big of a deal. Um, I mean, they do feel oh, every composition, but I think B tier is probably solid for Italy. Um, the other thing, too, to note is, like, their, their Culverins are really good, no doubt, and they have a really good economy. Um, I just think that if your team is getting rushed, because the thing is, is like it's hard to rush Italy, but if your team is getting rushed, they won't be able to, you know, assist you as well in the early game because like all the four, like all the outposts are just in their base, right? And they're just booming. Um, so it's it's interesting, you know, a lot of the civs that you see on this board right now in one v one are not like particularly great, but they're doing well in team games. And then like in one of you one setting, a lot of the great civilizations are kind of like, they, they don't really complement others, if that makes sense. And you, you want a balance of units in team games. And it changes quite a bit when you're contributing to a mass versus being the mass. Sweden. Sweden in team games are very good. They... They do, however, eat up a lot of gold on the map, and it can be quite annoying. Um, it's like it, like having a... I'll say this. If you have a bad Japan and a bad Sweden teammate, meaning 
they just kind of like shrine your hunts or torp your minds. It's really hard. So if you're a conscious player and you're playing as Japan or Sweden and you're not doing those things, right? Some maps very map dependent on the resource allocation. So if you're running out of torps on like your side or mines, it's hard for Sweden. It really is. And the same can be said with Japan, although they do have some mitigating factors for Japan, like the, uh, the pen from the Dutch consulate, things like that. Um, like a strong water economy. But Sweden, I think, is less versatile. And they also do not have a very complete roster of units. Hakapellets feel awkward. I mean, they can go Moskos Falk for sure. But, um, I mean, I guess it is also more possible to go into Jaegers uh, with, you know, the barracks and other mercenaries. But, I mean, like... They definitely do fill the anti-cav role. They fill the frontline musketeer role, which is very important. So I think I'll put them at the bottom of A tier. Portugal. Now, Portugal is very good in team games. Best dragoons, strong skirmishers. Artillery is a little lacking, you know. I mean, once you get to age four, though, they'll mostly be making horse guns so or horse artillery, which is really good. A um, bit more expensive, and they're a very food-heavy economy. They're great on the water, and they can really take over the water for your team. And not just contest, but dominate. And that's huge. That's really big. Um, I will say that um, their their cards for their, like their cav kind of kind of don't mix well together. But, I mean, you don't really want them going hoss when they just can go really good goons. Um, they synergize really well. I mean, they just, yeah. Um, if you have a Portugal teammate, you can just be like, make Casadors or make Musks because they have the guard musketeers as well, or, you know, goons. Like, they have, they basically fill all of your needs for your sieve. Um, I'll probably put them, like, here, I would say. Um, yeah. Now that I think about it, honestly, I, I, I really don't. I mean, I play a lot of China. I've played the Malign team games to great success. It's just that, you know, when half of your units, like your Chang Daos or your Iron Flails, they, they have a lot of melee units. And those don't do as well. And you can't really mono comp. And that really hurt. Like the banner army system hurts them. But in a 1v1, they can do. Like, they can flank with Cav. They have the space, right? But in a team game, when there's, like, 300, 400 units on the field, Chang Daos aren't going to be able to get into the front line or, you know, kill Cav. They'll just get deleted. Your Cav itself isn't great for raiding, um, per se. They kind of just, like... They can't flank as much. It's it, it's not easy. And most of the time, you're just standing there with Arc Buzias and just kind of like, what do I... Like, I can't... You're just kind of filling space and not really contributing with half of your units. Um, and also the hand mortars are garbage. Like if, if your team is like, yo, there's just spamming artillery. We need like coals. China's not going to do that for you, man. The, the hand mortars take up so much space. They're so damn expensive. Flying crows are mediocre um, until like the fourth and fifth ages. So I really think that this is apt. I know it's harsh because China is a fantastic civ. Do not get me wrong. Like they are S tier. But in team games, I really just like don't like having China teammates. Um, it just doesn't feel good. Um, I think we'll go with this. So that's my one uh, team game tier list. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if you have any changes or any other ideas, let me know. Thanks.